There you go, Ardil. Newspaper and peppermints. Set up for the day. Thank you, Joy. Surely you're not going into work today, are you? I am, but I don't mind. Well, I hope you'll find time for the fate next Sunday. The fate? Of course. How could I not? It's going to be a real treat. And without Linda in charge. Eddie Grundy has the reins this year, yes. She told me. Not like Linda, taking a back seat. Oh, not so much a back seat. More a branching out. Branching out? Who's branching out? We're talking about the fate. Oh, the fate. I was just going to say, you're doing this souvenir brochure on the history of Ambridge fates. Yes, I have undertaken that task, that's true. But as far as the fate's concerned, I'm actually looking forward to putting my feet up this year. I'm surprised you say that. I thought you relished the challenge. No, there are other challenges, Ardil. This literary venture for one, and your curtains for another. My curtains? In your room. I'm planning to get them cleaned. I'm redirecting my energies to perfecting the B&B &B for one thing, so if you let me know when it would be convenient for me to remove your curtains... I will, Linda. I'll find a window for my windows. Bye, Ardil. Don't do too much. I won't. Oh, dear me. What's the matter? I was trying to put a brave face on it. On what? But I don't know it worked. A brave face on what? The fate. I felt I had to for the sake of the village, but honestly, Linda, I'm far from happy. Well, you know who to apply to. Aye, that's the trouble. The Grundies. The Grundies. Eddie in particular, not me. But, Linda, I've told you. No point going to Eddie Grundy. He's the one losing his grip. And I've told you, while it might not be as polished as in previous years... It won't be. Perhaps we should all learn to live with that. I seriously wonder if there'll be anything at all to polish at this rate. Someone ought to have a word. So you all right, Kirsty? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm having a coffee with Linda at quarter two. Oh, don't let me hold you up. I was just wondering how Prague went. Oh, Prague. Yeah, well, um... You're not long back? No. Prague was good. Yes, we had a good time. Lovely city. Oh, by the way, um, I heard about Johnny. <laughs> yes, well, it appeals to him. I can't see it myself. Working on a boat is what I was told. A yacht, yes. Well, that really is not farming. <laughs> Very not. They're going round the world. <laughs> Will you manage without him? <laughs> we'll have to. Yeah, but coming on top of the news about Rob... I know. Actually dying. I mean, how are you supposed to feel about that, you know? Well, it's a good thing for Helen and for all of us. No doubt about it. Yeah, definitely. But I don't know. I mean, he does have a dad, a brother. How do they feel? Sorry, I'm not going to waste too much time on that, Kirsty. No, but you know what I mean. Actually, I sometimes wonder if it's all for real. For real? Or has he set it all up? He couldn't. What if he's not dying? He couldn't do that, though. You never can tell with Rob Titchener. And his brother coming to see Helen. I mean, what's that if it's not manipulation? Oh, he must have had some sort of warped version of the relationship from Rob. Yeah, of course he did. How's Helen been doing this last week? Trying hard to keep on top of things, but you know as much as I do. I'm actually working on my brochure this morning. About the fate? It's been a fascinating project. Well, I've been thinking about the fate, too. No, Kirsty, no. What? I appreciate why you want to ask. I have a long association with the fate, but this year I am released. Uh, yes, I know. You want Eddie Grundy. Well, I've already been to see Eddie. Oh, this is the second time today I've had to explain this. I didn't get anywhere. I asked him questions. <sighs> he gave no answers. No. The thing is... Rex and I are putting together a rewilding display for the fate, and there are certain activities which we want to timetable in. What sort of activities? Oh, um, bug hunts, pond dipping, identification trails, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to clash with any other events. Well, no, of course not. So we just want to find out what's going on when, and I wondered if you knew. No, Kirsty. Well, I thought if anyone does, Linda will. Well, I don't. And as I say, you're not the first to have mentioned this today, so I will speak to Eddie myself, simply to jolt things along a little. Oh, I'm making a sandwich. Can I do one for you? No, thanks. I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, I'm fine. Apart from trying to detach Henry from his mobile for five minutes. 
Nothing new there then. <laughs> I suppose not. I saw Kirsty in the village. Oh, how was her Prague trip? All right, I think. She didn't say a lot. She asked how you were taking all this. All this being the news that he's dying, I suppose. Well, yes. I think I'm okay about it, Tom. Good. As far as I'm concerned, it's finished business. Time to concentrate on the farm again. Yes. There's plenty to do. Yeah, there's the tea room to think about. The tea room, yes, and Fallon. A decision to be made. Personally, I think we need more time on that one. Uh, I think so too. It's no real rush. And I've got the boss at a rural food fair next Sunday. I should be really focusing on that. Yeah, you'll do well. Potentially, we ought to do very well. I just haven't been focused enough on it the last few weeks. And we all know why. But I can change all that, get things... What? Oh, no. Helen, what is it? Oh, Tom. Grey Gables, I didn't put the cheese bit in. Oh, I've got to reapply for my supplier accreditation before it lapses. I should have done it weeks ago. Oh, you didn't tell me. I know, but, but I should have reminded no, you. it's not your fault. Time just slipped by. I negotiated a short-term contract with a veg a while back. I should have mentioned it no, again no, no. then. Tom, my responsibility. That's why I've been planting so much extra veg lately. But I should have jogged your memory. Please, don't worry about it. Anyway, it's not too late to sort something out. Oh, that'll drive a hard bargain, though, Grey Gables. But the cheese is good. Yeah. So I'll get things in order, plan the pitch. If we win next week, that'll help. Yep, and I can talk to Grey Gables about potentially supplying mozzarella. I'll maybe give Ardil a call. Yeah, yeah, I do. He was really keen on finding a local supplier. I mean to see when he can meet us. Well, the sooner the better. I'll, I'll make some calls too, see if I can get some buffalo milk so I can tell him I've started to trial it. We can do this, Helen. Yeah, we can. Ardil's always said he wants to provide local food. Uh, and you can't get much more local than Bridge Farm. We're just late with our bid, that's all. But not too late. No, and we really have got this covered. Why wouldn't they give it to us? I don't think you realise just quite how serious this has become. Me? The fate is a week today, and I'm beginning to think it's been critically underplanned. I've been trying to tell you this, Linda. I've spoken to Eddie. And did you get anywhere? It wasn't easy. There was a distinct suggestion of non-cooperation. In fact, I don't think it's unreasonable to say he fobbed me off. He never did. Oh, yes, I was fobbed off, Joy. I phoned several times, and it was always Clary who answered. He was in his shed, apparently, occupied in some task it would have been highly dangerous to abandon, according to Clary. You think it wasn't true? Well, of course not. He was in the room, mouthing lies at her. I could tell she was flustered, and... She spoke in a squeaky voice. You could ask him to phone you back. Well, I did that. Of course I did. And Clary said he would as soon as he'd emerged from his pressing duties in his shed. But he never did. Uh, what do you think? Put all that together with what Kirsty told me. And what I've been saying all along. And there's something fishy going on. I fear for this fate, Joy. I fear it's going to fall far below the standard that's been set in previous years. I think you're right. And what I heard this afternoon put the cap on it. What? There's no band. <gasps> no band? No band. But there was. I know there was. I heard it from the mouth of a Grundy. You booked the Holiton Silver Band? Yes. Because it's completely traditional. Well, it's now been unbooked. Unbooked? Oh, we have to find out what's going on here, Joy. Well, we can't ask Eddie. He's saying nothing. No, it's no good asking the rest of the clan. They just close ranks. I know. What? Brad Horribin. He's just joined the committee and he's not really a Grundy. He's going out with Mia, though, isn't he? Yes, but I reckon he could be the weak link in their chain. <gasps> I think you're right. He could be our UCO. Our what? Undercover operative. Oh, do keep up, Joy. Do we know his movements? We can find out. Right. In that case, I'll separate him from the pack and question him. Come in, come in. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, that's all right. Good. Only five minutes. It's good of you to see us at such short notice and on a Sunday. Please, have a seat. Oh, Thank you. My pleasure. I was delayed because I had to see our head of food. Oh? Are they someone we ought to speak to? And when I say head of food, I mean head of food on a trial basis to see how we get along. Well, sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Trial basis? It is, yes. Because basically we're not. Getting on, I mean. Hence the delay in seeing you. Well, we can wait. No need. If you're still sorting things out... Thanks, Tom, but it is sorted out. Oh? We had to agree to go our separate ways. Already? A shame, but I had no choice. And the way things are, it won't be easy finding a replacement. 
Now, it was cheese you wanted to talk about, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, we should have talked about it earlier than this, really. You probably should. I was disappointed not to hear from you. Well, we had rather a lot on. Still, if a thing's important... Uh, anyway, we're ready now, so I thought we can suggest a few options, bounce some ideas around. I see. Especially bearing in mind our conversation last year. Our conversation? About mozzarella. Ah, mozzarella. You were quite keen, I seem to remember. I am. Fascinating process, cheese making. Did I ever tell you I used to help my grandmother strain curds back in Pakistan? Oh, really? Also from buffalo milk. Ours was, yes. Oh, I see. Well, of course, the milk is the vital ingredient. I, she would give me the muslin cloth and encourage me to squeeze with all my might. <laughs> Thinking about it takes me right back. <laughs> well, I'm ready to run a trial batch pretty soon. Are you? Of mozzarella, yep. I mean, we're close. I've ordered the buffalo milk and we can get you a sample batch by early next week. But I already have my mozzarella supplier, Helen. Have you? Already. But when we spoke, you said to keep in touch. Well, I have a friend in Shropshire who gets the milk from a herd of brown Swiss dairy cattle, and the fat content from that is perfect for mozzarella. But I was just about to start the process. Well, not just with Grey Gables in mind, I hope. Well... From Shropshire, you said? Yes. When you first came to Grey Gables and you met with everyone, remember... You promised you'd use local produce wherever you could. I remember, yes. And Shropshire is local. Is it? It's in the Midlands. Um. Oh, dear. I'm wanted in the kitchen. We have more to talk about, obviously. But not now, I'm afraid. I'm sorry if this has been disappointing for you. Uh, do excuse me. He was interested in mozzarella, definitely. You didn't tell me you would pitch that today. The whole conversation we had, Thomas, as if it never happened. He's pretending it never happened. Uh, you've ordered the buffalo milk? What? Uh, yes, this morning. I can drive over tomorrow and pick it up. Not that there's any point now. You shouldn't have done that. Well, why not? It shows we're prepared to innovate. It shows you didn't think ahead. No, Tom. You should have pitched your banker cheese. He already knows about them. Borsetia Blue and Sterling Gold. No, I, I think this has damaged the bid. No. I can't let it. Maybe the signs aren't good, but I'm not giving up on this, Tom. We'll see him again and get this contract signed and sealed. Brad, I was hoping to see you. Oh, hi there, Mrs Snow. Can I get you anything? Not for the moment, thank you. I'm on clearing tables just now, but uh, would you like a tea? No, no, no need. I only want a moment of your time. Do you? As a new member of the Fate Committee. Oh, right. As I hear. Well, I am, yeah. A very welcome member, too, I might add. Oh, well. Bringing youth and invention and real ability. I don't know about that. Well, the rest of us do. And now that you're on the committee, I think we should take advantage. Oh? Give you more responsibility. I wonder if you might be prepared to take on a special role within it. Like what? Treasurer. Oh, that, right. Honorary treasurer, in fact. It needs someone with mathematical acumen, you see. Yeah, yeah, I know. Someone who can grasp figures, perhaps even turn them into projections for the planning of fates in the future. Create graphs and charts and so on. I am already, Mrs Snell. You are? Treasurer. Eddie asked me. You are the treasurer? Yes. And handling the finances? Well, Eddie didn't say nothing about graphs and charts, though. Just said I needed a cash float. Part of the inner circle. But it's a good idea, though. This puts a different complexion on the matter. <clears throat> now, now I know you're close to the engine room, as it were, you can tell me so much more. Uh... I'm not so sure about that. No, Brad, it's imperative. You and I must have a conversation. Must we? About the fate. Uh, well, as, uh, as I say, I, I don't know we should be doing that. And as I say, it's imperative that we do. All, all the plans and stuff, though, they're, they're kind of secret. Right, Brad, a cappuccino and whatever you're having. Oh, I'm really not sure. That table there in the alcove. Oh, I, I can't, though. I'm on table clearing. The tables are clear. You're merely waiting for people to turn up. And while you do that, you can talk to me. 
You really don't have to be here, Tom. I want to be. I can do this on my own, It's you know. moral support. I know, but I can manage. And Ardil will know we mean business if he sees we've both come to Grey Gables again and we're both in on but it. But there's plenty to be doing on the farm, though. Yes, and we have George Grundy joining us for a couple of stints <gasps> this week. Well, yes. So we're covered. It just feels a bit as if I'm being supervised, Tom. <clears throat> ah, you've arrived. Good. Roy said to wait in your office. Yes, of course. Hello. What's this? Uh, I've brought a cheese board so you can see and taste what we'll be talking about. Lovely. Oh, this is so beautifully presented, <laughs> Helen. It looks great. It's beautiful cheese. And the Borsitch of... It's Bl award-winning. Uh, the Blue, this one, won a prize at the Food and Farming Awards. The Borsitch of Blue, I know. And the biscuits are courtesy of Fallon at the tea room, so mm. everything's made here. A stone's throw from Grey Gables on a family farm. People can even watch it being made. Yes, we have a viewing window. Which is an added attraction. Yes, I love the window. <laughs> Try some. May I? <clears throat> it also won silver at the British Cheese Awards. And there's um, another show next week in... It was such a rural food fair. Watch out for it. <laughs> we expect to do well again. Mm. This is good. Mm -hmm. Lots of people think so. Very good. It's always done very well at Grey Gables. And could do again, I'm sure. Right. Well, I've seen the cheese. I've tasted the cheese. <laughs> Now I need the numbers. Uh, numbers, of course, uh, we can do that. I'll email you a full spec this afternoon. Costings and the story of Borsetshire Blue. Yes, good. Actually, its proximity to us is an important factor. We are committed to local producers. In fact, I might need your growing advice, Tom. I've just got an allotment over at Lower Loxley. Really? Homegrown veg of my own. Oh, no. <laughs> Sounds like serious competition. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, Tom. Watch this space. <laughs> uh, how about the sterling gold? Uh, well, yes. Happy to try it. Which has an even greater link with Grey Gables, named after Oliver and Caroline Sterling. Mm. Although, I'm not actually looking for a hard cheese. Sorry? You're not? Not at the moment. I think I've already found what we're looking for. It's a very good cheese over at Fawcett Magna. Celia Sparrow? Celia, yes. Her Cordwell cream. Uh, it's not nearly as good as ours. I got on very well with Celia, who's also successful at cheese shows, she was saying. So if you could send me the figures for your boss at Chablou, beyond that, I think we've already lined up a few answers for our cheese board. I I'm not so sure I should be telling you this. Of course you should. I it's committee business. Well, there'll be minutes, minutes of the meetings, which at some point will be open to scrutiny. Uh, no. It's just a lot quicker and clearer this way. Uh, no, I, I mean, we ain't got minutes. No minutes? Eddie says he did write stuff down himself to begin with, but when he looked at what he wrote, it didn't make no sense, so he said it was a waste of time doing them. You don't keep minutes. This is awful. Probably shouldn't even tell you that. Appalling. I still got tables to see. Wait! The tables can look after themselves. There's every indication that this is even worse than I thought. Eddie is doing his best. And you think that'll be good enough, do you? Mm. I can't rightly say. Well, do you? Please, don't ask me no more. Brad, I believe you have a duty. I'm only there to do the figures. A duty to the truth. Are you going to sit back and watch the Ambridge fate crumble to dust? Is that what you want? No, of course not. You value the truth? Yes. Do you? Yes. Yes, I do. We have it in our power to save the fate. You and I, between us, can do that. Oh, I don't know. But I need your cooperation, Brad. Ambridge needs you. All right, all right. I'll, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you. Which ain't all that much. Now we'll see, won't we? Perhaps, for a start, you can confirm the status of the Holliton Silver Band. The band? Are they in or out? I hear rumours. Oh. No. I asked Joy Horville to book them. She says she did. And she did. Then... Only then Eddie said we weren't having no band at all and he cancelled. Oh. oh. He said we could just have stuff coming through speakers. Oh, but that's grotesque. Then I told him you still have to pay to do that. But of course you do, you need a licence. Plus, people started moaning because there wasn't going to be one, so we said we would, we'd have one. Only then, him and Will both went out and booked a band. And one was Holliton? Yeah. But there was another one as well? Yeah. Eddie phoned a few of his mates doing country and western. Oh. And... Him and Will had a row about it, blaming each other, so after that, they both went out and cancelled their bookings. They both did? Yeah, without telling each other. Oh. So now we've ended up with no bands, no music at all. Back where we started. And Holliton have been cancelled twice. Oh. But what about the Tombola? Not happening. I guessed as much. Even though the Tombola is a money spinner. Mm. 
There's not much money spinning going on, far as I can see. I calculate we're not even going to cover our expenses, Mrs. Mm. Snell. Current progress, we're heading for a loss. But if all his plans actually work out... No, oh, they he... won't. Well, just suppose they do. <laughs> It'd take a miracle. Well, miracles have been known to happen. As honorary treasurer, I'd have to say, it's not a good policy to build your budget on them. Might he save the day, though? Is any of it likely to come off? Bits of it. He's put a lot of work into. Which bits? Uh, well... Which um, bits, Brad? Mostly the ferret stuff. The ferret stuff? And what do you mean by that? Well, um... I knew about some ferret elements. Are you suggesting there's more? He was on about calling the old day ferrety fun. Oh. And basing the old fate on ferrets. There's knitted ferrets... Ferret-based activities and whack of ferret. Oh. And the highlight of the whole day... Which is what? Don't know. It's a secret. But it involves ferrets? I think it's quite likely. Oh. To be honest, it's ferrets front and centre this year. And is there anything non-ferret? Oh, there's a reward in display. Mia's helping with that. Right, Brad. <clears throat> we have to act from this precise moment onwards. I will need a list of everything that's definitely happening with names and contact numbers. And I need it as near to now as you can possibly make it. We have less than a week to save this fate. And he kept stuffing himself with cheese. Did you notice? <laughs> yes. The cheese he said he didn't want. Felt like shoving the plate in after it. That's two promises he's broken. Oh, the mozzarella and the sterling gold. How are we supposed to trust him after that? And local. He's got a weird take on what's local. <laughs> Shropshire. It'll be Lincolnshire next. Yeah, locally sourced cod. Uh, now, what worries me is we'll lose out on the veg too. I mean, you've got a contract for that, though. Short term. As soon as it runs out, who knows which way he'll jump. I mean, maybe he'll provide everything from his wretched allotment. Tom, this feels more and more like the end of our Grey Gables connection. But we can't let him get away with well, it, though. What else can we do? He holds all the cards. We have to build a case he can't ignore. You do well at the Borsitcher Food Fair. He has to pay attention. That's a start. Then we build on that. We win him around, Helen, by whatever means we can. There you go. That's it. Thank you, Brad. Uh, the first column is all the stuff that's definitely happening, with all the names and numbers. Mm, not a very long column. No. Uh, this is, though. This bit... Here's all the people who was going to do something, but who never got asked. My word. Or who did get asked, only it then got cocked up somewhere down the line. Hmm. What are you going to do now? Ultimately, I'm going to rekindle the flame of the fate. It will then take place, and it'll be a success. And before, ultimately? Penultimately, I'll have to confront Eddie. No. Face him with these facts. Y you can't do that, Mrs Snell, no. Why not? Well, he he'll know it was me. Eddie will know I grassed him up. Not necessarily. That I betrayed the Grundys. No. I'll be banished. They'll cancel me. Of course they won't. Banished by the old family. No, Brad, no. He will never know. He will? Oh, I shouldn't have done it. They'll cast me out. Calm down. I'm not going to tell him you're their mole, and he'll have no reason to think you are. No? Of course not. What if he questions me? Oh, believe me, he'll be far too busy to question you. I'll see to that. Trust me, your name won't pass my lips. We can't give up on this, Helen. Grey Gables is far too big a customer to abandon. Well, except they're the ones doing the abandoning. Are they, though? <laughs> Rather are, Dill. He's no fool, Helen. He'll know what works best for him, and he'll play the game until he gets it. Well, that's not what he's saying, though. No, of course not. He says he's got other options lined up, but he doesn't say they're signed off. He's probably saying the same thing to Celia Sparrow, and waiting to see what our next move will be. And most of what he's looking for, we can provide. Like best quality. Exactly. And organic. He wants to be organic. I know. It's Grey Gable's brand. The best, organic, local. So, you think I should try again? No, I think I should try again. You? A different approach. Think what he said so far about these other deals. A friend is supposed to be providing his mozzarella. A possible deal with Celia Sparrow, who he gets on well with. What are you getting at, Tom? It's the personal touch he responds to. So, we try a different approach. By befriending him? A charm offensive. Ugh, I'm not sure I could do that, pretend to be his friend, after the way he's treated us. No, but I could. 
I can become his new best mate. The first thing we have to do is make some labels. Labels, right. On these cards, Kirsty. Yeah, so people can identify things. And are these plants? We want them to put the labels where they think they belong, as an activity. We did think of doing it on tablets or something. Oh, no, that wouldn't be the same. No, that's what we thought. It's not so rewilding, doing it on a device. No, I mean, this is partly about connecting with nature. Yeah, about being in touch. Yeah, touching and smelling and how you feel about it. So, we make labels? And handwritten. I think they've got to be handwritten. Yeah, I can do that. And the spelling has to be right. Oh, it will be. Oh, can we put the Latin names too? Oh, well, uh... Oh, I like the Latin. Um, this one... Oh, the meadow sweet. It's Philippendula almaria. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Hiya, Kirsty. Hiya, Mia. Oh, no. What's the matter? Chelsea Horribin, come to stick her oar in. Oh, this is for the fate, is it? Uh, yeah. Mia's helping us with the rewilding stall. And we haven't got a lot of time to get ready, so... What, on Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Brad said you was doing something for it. Oh, I don't suppose he said what else is going on, did he? What else? On the day of the fate. I asked Linda to find out, but I haven't heard anything yet. Well, he's not said anything to me, no. Mia? What? Brad say anything to you? Uh, not about the fate, no. Well, there you go then. No news. Hmm. So what are you actually doing? Making labels. What, with pens? You could print them off, be quicker. No. Well, and neater. More in keeping if it's written. Right. I've got to go and see Rex about the pond dipping. I'll be back later. Oh, no. Uh, wait. Well, bye, Kirsty. Right, so I've got to get on here. Yeah, you just carry on. So this is like bogweed and stuff, is it? Bogweed? Or whatever. Actual stuff to get rid of so you know what you're clearing out. <laughs> you don't get rid of it. You encourage it. What? Bogweed? Chelsea, what are you doing here? What? It's not really like you, is it? All this? I'm volunteering. You <laughs> what? Offering to help. Help? Why not? Well, for a start... I just thought, you know, now it's you and Brad. Well, it might give us a chance to chat. Oh. You and me, I mean. Not mates exactly, but not so snidey neither. Snidey? Well, we was a bit. Couldn't help taking a pop at each other, so maybe if we both help out on the stool... No, right. That could work. We could... What? Talk a bit. Right, yeah, about bogweed and stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure bogweed's a thing. No, well... Oh, something I could do. Yeah? Paint nails. What? Get some varnish and stuff and people come to the stall and I paint their nails with flowers and daisies or whatever, yeah? No, I don't think so. No. Why not? Because it's, well, it's not really on brand. On brand? And it's kind of naff. <sighs> right, okay. And anyway, varnish, probably going to be toxic. You know what? If that's what you think, you can stick it. I'm only saying... And I'll tell you what's really naff. No, Chelsea, wait. Yeah, thinking the only way to save the planet is to dress like a scarecrow. Is that the veg box for Green Acres? Yes. You want to take it? Oh, I can't now. And Dad's out. Could you leave it by the back door? OK, fine. I'll be back at lunch and take it in. Right. Ah, here comes Ardil. Good. Good? Why? I want to have a word, that's all. Oh. Well, I'd better leave you to it. No, no, it's all right. It's only about cricket. Oh? I was thinking of recruiting him. What, for the team? Why? Well, we need people, don't we? Extra bodies. <laughs> yeah, but Ardil? He's not a cricketer, is he? Well, he's keen, I think. What are you up to, Tom? Nothing. You are. You're up to something. Two-thirds through the season and you're recruiting. He might have a hidden talent. Mystery spinner, maybe. <laughs> Tom, Alistair, what's this? Daily exercise on the green? Oh, not me. I'm off to work. I'll, um, I'll leave you with Tom here. I believe he has a proposition for you. Bye, Alistair. See ya. A proposition? Well, just a thought, really. About? You're keen on cricket. Cricket? Yes. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. You are, though. Of course. Uh, Ambridge is suddenly a player short. Oh? Johnny, he's decided to sail around the world, so I was just wondering if you might be interested... No, Tom, no. Let me stop you there. What? I can't play. Oh, you're just being modest. <laughs> no, I'm telling you... It's just that there's a gap at number five, which you... Seriously, could... Tom, I'm no good. Well, maybe we should find out. You take a break for lunch, I suppose? Occasionally. Then let me buy you a pint. At the ball. Say one thirty. A pint. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> Not thinking. A coffee, then. Well, and uh, cake after we've had our trial. Trial? Uh, nothing too serious. I can throw you down a few. <laughs> Honestly, Tom. Uh, see what you make of them. What do you say? 
Hello? Are you busy? Not too busy. Why? Um, can I have a word? Of course. What is it? I've got something on my mind. Oh, I see. <laughs> Not sure I'm the best person for dishing out love life advice. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's all cool. It's, well, it's the Chelsea situation. Oh, I didn't know there was a Chelsea situation. Yeah, there is a bit. When she was here this morning, she was offering to help out on Sunday. Oh, well, that's nice. I can find her something no, to do. No, I don't think she's coming now. She got antsy and stormed off. Why? Well, she didn't like something I said. And um, what was that? It was hardly anything at all. This is the problem. She's such a nightmare, Chelsea is. Deliberately confrontational, really awkward, always on the lookout for bother, and so petty. I mean, you well, can see... Takes all she's bimbo core. <laughs> So you don't get on? Not really, no. But the thing is, she's Brad's sister. Ah, I see. And you don't want your relationship with Chelsea to spoil things between you and Brad? No. They get on. I, I mean, now and again they fight, but basically they're close. I just wondered, you know, what would you do in my situation? Right, Ardil. Ready? When you are. Here we go again, then, and step out to meet the ball. Hmm. And here it comes. And through it goes. That was much closer, though. A, a swing and a miss. Let's face it, Tom, I've missed them all. Now you can see I'm as bad as I said I was. No, no. Maybe even worse. No, it looks good, though. You've got um, a good technique. Well... I'm a keen student of Barbara Azam. In my head, I'm doing what he does. Y yes! Yes, I can see that. Except the bit where he actually hits the ball. But I can see you've got potential. There, there's definitely something of Barbara in the way you move. Perhaps if you kept your eyes open... Were well, they closed? Could make a difference. I didn't even realise. Then you'd know where the ball pitches. So, you want to give it a try? <sighs> I'm not sure there's much point. I'll bowl a few long hops so you know what's coming. All right. And then I'll declare, in time for lunch. Right. Here goes. Pitching short mm -hmm. and not too fast. Uh, and Bob and move back and... Oh, you hit it! I did! I hit it! Oh, dear. You saw where it came down? I'm afraid so. It came down on Green Acres. Green Acres? Where Jim Lloyd lives. Hello. Are you busy? Moderately busy. I can come back. Oh, that's OK. How can I help? Just wanted to ask about this. What is it? Nail varnish. Nail varnish? Non-toxic nail varnish. Only Mia Grundy said if I did nail painting, it'd probably be toxic and kill otters or something, but it isn't, is it? It's harmless. <sighs> no, this seems fine to me. Perfectly safe. Right. Perhaps you'll tell her then. If you think it's absolutely necessary, yes, I will. Was that it? Yeah. Nothing else on your mind? No. Well... Yes? I've got this thing going on. I don't know what to do about it. Right. It's Mia Grundy. Oh, yeah, she said you'd offered to volunteer. Well, that's kind of you, Chelsea. No, I did say I would, yeah. Hence the nail polish. Yeah, well, in a way it is, because I'm not helping with the stool now on account of her. Because of Mia? Yeah. She gets so up herself and starts coming out with all this I know better than you crap. So you've fallen out with her? Yeah, well, who wouldn't? I mean, she's such a nightmare giving it the yak, yak, yak all the time. Yes, well, it's very probably toxic. And so stuck up, save the planet this, save the planet that. Like, I'm personally responsible for destroying it. Well, you're obviously very different people. Total eco-geek. Can't you just stay out of each other's way? No, not really. That's the thing, see? She's Brad's girlfriend. So you don't want your relationship with Mia to spoil things between you and your brother? Well, I don't want him hurt. Because he likes her, see? I mean, he literally likes her, so what am I supposed to do about that? Well... Do I just have to put up with her? The first thing to say... Because we've got nothing in common. Ah, but you have. That's what I was going to say. There's at least one big thing you both do have in common. Yeah? That you and Mia, you both care about Brad. You don't want this to be bad for him. Which is a starting point, isn't it? Well... Something to build on? It's like one brick. Better than no bricks. 
You two, you are different, Chelsea. And you know she's not suddenly going to become like you. <laughs> yeah, as if. But if you can put up with the way she is, well, maybe she can do the same for you. Yeah, but she's not going to do that, though. Well, you never know. I have a feeling that she might try. It's made a real mess of this shrub. Hi, Dranger. You think it'll survive? Don't know. It might. What about the pot? Oh, we've got most of the fragments. Oh, we could have a go at putting them together. Or just get him a new one. It depends how devoted Jim is to this particular pot. If it means a lot to him... Well, let's hope not. I've already fallen out with Jim Lloyd over the charging station. I don't want to get on the wrong side of him again. What's going on? Ah, uh, Alistair. I'm afraid there's been a bit of an accident. That's Dad's side Dranger. Yes. We were just clearing it up. Mm -hmm. And this bull's the culprit, I suppose. I'm afraid so. We were just mucking around on the green, and I took uh, a... My fault, Alistair. I'm really sorry. No, I was just saying... I was demonstrating a straight drive, and I overdid it. <laughs> you certainly did. I hope Jim won't be too upset. Well, he's not going to be delighted, Tom. That was a prize-winning hydrangea, as he was forever telling me. And the pot was a replica Grecian urn he got in Delphi. It wasn't intentional. No, I can see it was an accident. And you know what Dad'll say? It was an accident that could have been avoided. Probably. With a little prudence. I'll fetch a dustpan and brush. Why did you say that? What? That it was your fault. Oh, well, you said you didn't want to get on the wrong side of Jim. That doesn't mean I want to... I've known Jim a long time. It's kind of easier for me. That's considerate, Tom. Anyway, it was a tremendous hit. It didn't deserve punishment. Very considerate. Anyone would have done the same for a mate. A mate? Yeah, wouldn't you say? I don't know. But I can guess what you're doing here. What I'm doing? The flattery. They're asking me to join the team, which I won't be doing, by the way. I'm not sure what you mean. This is what you might call a charm offensive, wasn't it? Trying to win me over? Well, I can assure you it doesn't work. Not with me. No, it's going to be fantastic, Mia. Best ever. That's good. We've got some brilliant things lined up. And it's going to be brand spanking new. Never been seen before. Yeah, like what? Well, it's going to be attended by the Ferret Society. Our ferret displays are a dead cert crowd pleaser. Yeah, but what about... Everyone loves a ferret. Yeah, I heard about the ferrets. I was just And one... we've got a big showstopper highlight, which I can't say anything about yet. It's all top secret. The, and the whole programme, is that top secret too? No, no. Because Kirsty and me, we've been trying to plan the rewilding activities and we can't find out when anything is supposed to be happening. It'll happen. Don't you worry about that. So there will be a schedule? Of course there will. So we don't clash with other events? It's being prepared as we speak. It's on Sunday, Eddie. I've got a whole team working on it. It would just help to know. Oh, it's a big thing to put on, this is. Especially with the level of innovation I'm looking for. You need a team on top of their game. Well, sometimes they're a bit... What? Slack. And what about the marquee you organised? What about it? Emma says it's like a canvas shack. We have to work within our budget. And made from an old tarpaulin, she said. As I say. She has to do teas in it. It'll keep the rain off. She said it'll be like serving tea in a phone box. One in, one out. But there's blips, of course there is. You always get blips. But you're confident. Yeah. Mind you, I would be even more if people did what they're supposed to do instead of griping about everything all the time. <laughs> you're beginning to sound like Linda Snell. Well, no wonder. I've got... Oh, talk of the devil. Uh, Eddie? I'm not here. Uh, Eddie, what's the matter? Linda Snell coming this way. Uh, does that matter? I'm staying behind this phone box till she's gone. But why? It don't matter why. Get rid of her, will you? Uh, looks like you're in luck. She's gone over to speak to Sabrina. Sure? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, thank heavens for that. What's your problem with Linda? Oh, I ain't got a problem with her. It's her what's got a problem with me. <sighs> How do you think she seemed? Um, I don't know. I can't tell by the way she walks. Yes, you can. You can tell her all sorts of things from a folk's gait. Yeah, right. You can too. Well, short, quick strides, then she's had a barney with Robert and she's gone for a walk to clear her head. And uh, what about long, purposeful strides then? Oh, dear. That bad? I don't want to stick around and find out. Uh, too late, Eddie. She's coming this way. Oh... Oh, you 
out for a walk then, are you, Eva, eh? You're taking Stella for a walk. <laughs> He's actually out checking on the harvest. What, for real? <laughs> no, Chelsea. Because you do get working dogs, I know. Well, you're more for herding and retrieving. And you could be, I don't know, clearing rats out of the barley or something. Mm. No, no, Har harvest such a demanding time. It's the only way I can walk in is to keep them with me. Oh, right. What brings you out here? What, me? You don't look like a countryside walker. No, thank God, nah. <laughs> I'm on my way to the rewilding. I'm helping them out with the fate. Oh? Raising awareness and stuff. It's quite important. Hey there, you two. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. Or should I say three? Because you're here too, aren't you, boy? <laughs> and you're the one I really want to see, aren't you? Oh. Hey? <laughs> Oh, no, I, I phoned and got through to Brian, who said you might be out this way. I am. And I've got a proposition for you. For you and Weaver, really. Shall we tell Stella what it's all about? OK, shall we? Yeah, why don't you? How do you feel about a photo shoot? A, a photo shoot? To go with an article on the Lovell James website. Oh, I know you want to jump at that, Stella, a photo shoot. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure. I no, you do. You never know where them things lead. We're doing this feature on rescue dogs and we'd like to do something with you and Weaver. Oh, cute. During the harvest, I just, I don't think so. No, really, go for it. I could do you hair for you. Uh, no, thanks. Well, it won't don't. take long, I promise. For free, if you just make sure my name gets a mention. It's such an important story to tell, though, Stella. I, I take the photos myself. No, listen, uh, I'm not keen. It's not me, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> Stella, I don't, I don't know what to say. But, oh, there's a but. You've been so good to me, you and Alistair. So good to both of us. Th then you'll do it? OK, I will. <laughs> you won't be sorry. Great. This could put you on the style map. Oh, I do hope not. I'll be honest with you, Eddie. I've been making inquiries. I thought you might. The signs weren't good. No. I think we have to face facts. The fate is teetering on the brink of chaos. Would you agree? Yes, I would. The organisation hasn't been a success. No. Done by someone who couldn't organise two mugs on a shelf. Me. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of it, Eddie. Well, it was. It was me. The question is, what are we now going to do about it? I don't know. Truth is, I, I don't know what I'm doing. It, it, it's run away from me like a greased pig. There's so much you have to do. Oh, I know. I, I keep making these lists. Then I just sit there staring at him. And I can't stir myself. I'm so sorry. Now, don't dwell on it. So, so sorry. We have to look to the future. The future? Well, we have to find a solution. Well, there ain't one. Of course there is. What, what, what is it? We work together. What? Combine forces, you and I. You mean you'd help? Between us, we can make this work. You have some good ideas and you have ambition, whereas I can get things done. Can you? Oh, Eddie, you know I can. I have contacts and I know how to use them. Well, so I believe. First call, Hollett and Silver Band. Back in the fold by close of play. I'm prepared to guarantee it. Then we hire a proper marquee from proper marquee people and that also will be guaranteed. So, we're no further forward. It doesn't sound promising, I must say. Yeah, Tom's daft idea about befriending Ardell has come to nothing. So that's it. Well, it needn't be. End of the Grey Gables connection. No, I think Tom's right about one thing. We have a strong company ethos and Ardell would be foolish to turn his back on it entirely. But what does that mean in practical terms? There might be another way of going about this. Like what? Well, Ardell's very keen on the look of things, on brands, how things present themselves. So? So, we give him his own Grey Gables brand. How? Might just appeal to his ego. But how do we do that? Give him Grey Gables gold. I'm not sure I understand. Rebrand sterling gold. Rebrand? But you can't do something like that without talking to Oliver. Yes, I know, and I've done that. You have? He's perfectly all right with the idea. He says good luck with it. Well, I don't like it, Helen. It's our cheese, known by its proper name. It's only a name, though. Sterling Gold is more than a name. The cheese stays the same. Well, frankly, to me, it looks like selling out. But of course it isn't. And haven't we had enough of that lately? What with Tom and Natasha using their children to advertise massive chemical companies? Now this... Uh, Mum, don't be ridiculous. It's not the same at all. <laughs> Throwing out years of tradition. 
turning your back on Bridge Farm heritage. For goodness sake, it's nothing like that. No, well, that's what it looks like. We need the Grey Gables contract, and I don't think we'll get it unless we do something radical. We rebrand, that's the bottom line. It could mean the company behind the hotel would order our cheese for their other properties. You can't argue with that. I don't like it, Mum, Helen. Mum, the cheese business is mine, OK? And I have to do whatever it takes to keep it afloat. What is that? What? That song? Nothing, just me. You making it up? Yeah. Why? No, nothing, I just wondered. Right, how many labels are we supposed to do? Um, quite a lot, about four per plant, so oh. four different groups can use them. Be quicker to print them off. I already said Kirsty wants them done by hand. Why? Because it's more in keeping with the rewilding aesthetic, Chelsea. <sighs> I'll tell you what, though. What? We could round the edges off. Round the edges? Get off the labels with scissors, make them rounded. No. Like leaves, leaf shapes. No, because... What? <sighs> yeah, that actually, that might work. Um, try a few, see what Kirsty says. <sighs> Look, I'm just going to say it. Right, the thing is about Brad, he doesn't like a lot of people. No? no I don't mean he doesn't like people, he does mostly, but not when there's like a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Makes him edgy. He can't help that. No, he, he kind of goes out of focus, doesn't he? On the Star Wars thing, that is not a joke, you know. Of course not. <laughs> not to him. He's actually serious about all that. He loves it. I do too. I mean, I think it's jokes, but I try not to laugh at him about it. At least not anymore. Same with the rules. R rules? Brad's very obedient. He thinks if there's rules, you have to stick to them. Oh, yeah. Like, like everything being in the proper order, like books, shoes, whatever, same sort of thing. Same thing, yeah. <sighs> Only, I don't think he's right about rules. Sometimes they've got to be challenged. It's not how Brad sees it, though. You writing a report on him or something? What? No. All these observations. Well, you spot them too. He's my brother. I don't want people mucking him about. You think that's what I'm doing? No. I don't want him hurt or laughed at, that's all. Well then, like me. I don't either. No. Good. <sighs> oh, I reckon it's not working cutting labels like leaves. No, really, it's a great idea, Chelsea. Let's keep on doing them like that. Oh, sorry, Paul. I know you wanted Weaver at home, no, but... this is fine. There was no time to go home. The office will have to do. All's good, Stella. Don't worry. And I have to take over from Brian on the combine at six. Fair enough. Time and harvest wait for no man or dog. Well, maybe we can get a shot of him sitting at the computer. Weaver? How about that? Like he's just checking on the internet sort of thing. Anthropomorphise him, you mean? No, you're right. He's a dog. He should look like a dog. No, bad idea. Let's not. But I do want the pictures to tell a story. Kind of moody shots, Weaver looking noble and soulful. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that one. Monarch of the Glen sort of thing. Here, boy. Uh, <laughs> Look at me. Well, not exactly soulful. <laughs> Sit up, Weaver. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> More circus clown than Monarch of the Glen. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well done. No, Weaver. Sit. <laughs> not roll over. Oh, I'll just keep snapping. <laughs> We're bound to get something we could use. I thought I'd catch you before you packed up for the day. I was just leaving. Well, actually, I wanted to say sorry. What we said about rebranding... No, Mum, I, I didn't want to argue about it. I might have put things a bit too strongly. No, you're right. We could end up throwing away everything we've built. There might be a compromise there. Compromise? I've been thinking about it. What if we keep it as sterling gold but make a separate label for Grey Gables. Just for them? So it would be sterling gold, just the same, but packaged exclusively for the hotel. Might that work? It might, yeah. I'll give it some thought. Thanks, Mum. I could see it was getting to you. All the uncertainty over the agreement with Ardil and everything. I know. I just feel... If I can win that pack, maybe everything else will fall into place. You heard about George moving out of Little Grange? I did, yeah. Left Emma and Ed and he's moved in with Eddie and Clary full time. 
I heard. Now he says he's not stopping. Plan to move into number one, the green. George is? Yeah, Brad. As soon as he can. Since there's room for him. Number one? Yeah. With Will? So he says, which is bad all round. Yeah. Why? Well, because every time I go over there to see Will or Poppy, George will be there looming around and making a pain of himself. Oh, right. Oh, but I bet Emma and Ed are glad to see the back of him. I bet. So, uh, have they got room for them all at number one? Oh, not yet, no, but knowing George will be working on making sure there is. Right. Well, where is he now, then? Where's George? Yeah. He's moved out of Ed and Emma's, and he, he's not yet moved into Will's. No. Because there's no room yet. So, where actually is he? Grange Farm. Oh, Grange Farm, right. With Eddie and Carrie. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just told you that. Did you? I said, George is moving in with Eddie and Carrie, and you said yes, you heard. Oh, yeah. S sorry. <sighs> Always on the lookout for the next step up is George. He's got ambition. I uh, suppose you could call it that. Oh, listen to those birds, Brad. Hmm? Oh, yeah. I'm singing They're their little hearts out. <laughs> Love hearing it. <laughs> dawn chorus sort of thing. Except it's not dawn. It's evening. In case you haven't noticed. No, I mean, no. Yeah. Oh, this is nice tea, Brad. This? Yeah, out for a walk of an evening, you and me. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you, you can hear the combine going and all. Yeah, not quite the same as the birds, though, is it? No, I suppose not. <laughs> Missed you this week. No, well, you, you've been doing the rewilding stuff. Oh, yeah, Chelsea's helping with that, did she say? I expect so. With the rewilding? Oh, the fate, right. Uh... And Eddie picked the same day to hold the fate as the boss at your rural food fair. So Kirsty said Linda Snell's not very happy about all the unpicking she's got to do. Says it could have been avoided. The fate could? The clash. The clash? With the food fair? Brad, are you all right? Uh, yeah, fine. Are you? Uh, not really, no. What's the matter? Is everything all right at the orangery? Why? What have you heard? Nothing. Has anyone been saying anything? What about? Me uh, talking to people. Who? I can't really say. Brad, what's the matter? I got something I have to tell you. To tell me? Something on my mind. What? I got a confession to make. Still, Weaver. Hey, still. Is that Brian driving the combine? Yes. And loving every minute of it. <laughs> Ed's in the tractor alongside. Oh, yeah. And um, Ed finishes it in half an hour, which is when I take over. I, uh, I was going to ask him if he'd take Weaver back for me when we swap, but since I'm here... Oh, back to the house, would you mind? Of course not. And can you feed him? <laughs> me too. We're old mates, aren't we, Weaver? We'll get along fine. Are you sure I won't be taking you away from anything else? Nothing that can't be managed. I only came out to watch the harvest. There's nothing like harvest time on a farm, don't you think? Oh, absolutely the best time of year. Can't beat it. Oh, I love the way the grain arcs from the combine to the trailer as they move along. Oh, and when the fields start to get dark and the combine's lit up. Mm. Always inspires me. Reminds me why I came into farming. <laughs> and then someone's phone always goes off and spoils the moment. <laughs> yeah, let me hold <laughs> Weaver while you take. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> Weaver! Oh. Weaver, stay still for Ruth. Oh, settle down, you daft old thing. Ah, Alistair, what can I do for you? I, I never meant to, Mir, I swear to that. Never meant to what? I don't know what's happened. I never meant to betray you. What? How? How have you betrayed me? I betrayed the old Grundy family. Most of all, Eddie. It's you betrayed Eddie. I, I didn't know I was doing it. It, it happened so quick. And she, and she kept asking questions. Who did? Linda Snell. She, she said she wanted me to look after the money side of things, and I said I was already doing that. The, for the fate? Uh, what? Yes. Uh, and then she asked all these questions. What, what was he planning and all that? And, and did I think he was cocking everything up? And, and you said? I said yes, because he was. But I didn't know it was all going to turn out like it did. Then, when I thought about it afterwards, I realised I should have just said no. No comment. I dobbed him in, Mir. And she went after him because of what I told her. Uh, sorry, is that what you're worried about? Yes. And she'd have found out anyway, Brad. That's not the point, though, is it? When the family find out it was me, they're going to turn on me. 
They won't have nothing more to do with me. I'll be... Uh, uh, what's named? What? Uh, 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 banished. And then, what will that mean for us? You and me, Mia, I... Uh, I can't stop worrying about what I've done. But, Brad, they're working together. Eddie and Linda, they're working both on the fate now. I know. Best of friends, so it's worked out OK. Yeah, but when Eddie finds out it was me who did it... What, dobbed him in? Yeah. He's not going to let that go, is he? Maybe he won't know. He will, though. Why should he? Why would he ever find out? What? Well, I certainly won't be telling him. But it's the truth, Mia. And it matters. I've kind of been here before, uh, and I know. These things, they always do get found out. So, we're delighted with the photos of Weaver. But there's one more thing, Stella. We had a look at the deer while we were passing. What? You examined them? No, only through binoculars. As I said, we were just passing. One seems to be a touch lame. Right hind leg. Sorry? What? The combine's just going by. Oh, you sound busy, Stella. Do you want me to do this later? Oh, no, no. There, there, there won't be time later. Just give me the gist. Well, the gist is, one of the deer is lame, but it looks as if it's already on the mend. I could go in and do a proper examination, or no, just wait and see... Weaver! Stella, what's going on? Let me get this right. You're going to tell Eddie yourself. Before anyone else does, yes. Even though there's no point? There is a point. I told you why I have to. I don't get it, though, Brad. I really don't. I've been caught out like this before, when Harrison Burns questioned me and I tried to cover stuff up. Yeah, but that was different. That was George pulling the strings. It's not that different. I did something wrong. I didn't own up. It was a bad move. Yes, but this time you hadn't done anything wrong, Brad. Well, I know I have. No, you told Linda the fate was about to collapse. Betraying the Grundy family. And that was the right thing to do. Going against the Grundy code. But it was the truth, and you're helping to save the fate. By doing a bad thing. That don't make the bad thing good. What's this Grundy code thing, anyway? Uh, look out for your family. <laughs> you're not even a Grundy? No, but you have to respect their code. Uh, what if respecting their code means doing something wrong? What? What if their code says you can help yourself to whatever you like, steal from old people or something? What sort of a code is that? It doesn't say that, though, does it? <laughs> I don't understand this. Look, I'll tell you what, if Eddie were in your place, he'd have done the exact same thing that you did. No. He'd have told Linda everything. He wouldn't. Because it was the obvious thing to do. And he wouldn't be awake half the night worrying about what he'd done either. I never said I was awake half the night. Were you? thought so. Uh, can't you see why I have to do this, Mia? I can just about understand why you think it, yes. Thank you. But I wish you wouldn't. I believe I have to. I'm going round to see Eddie tomorrow morning. Get it over and done with. Stella? Oh, Bruce, sorry, I, I was miles away. What news? Nothing yet. Weaver's still in the treatment room. Alistair said he'd let me know as soon as he can. So Weaver's... I mean, he's still... Oh, he's still alive, yeah. How are things at the field? Oh, not so bad. Ed was pretty shaken up. Oh, well, he was driving the tractor, he would be. It's not his fault, though. I mean, Weaver ran into the path of the trailer. Ed just happened to be driving. Fifteen minutes later, it could have been me. Well, yeah, I tried telling him that, but he wasn't taking it in. And Weaver's not dead? No. That makes a big difference. Yeah, we got him here as quickly as we could. So, he has a chance. I know what Ed's feeling, though. I feel a bit the same myself. No. Well... I hair ran out of the barley room. Yeah, and I was holding the lead. Because I handed it to uh, you. But if I'd only thought a hair... Well, that was for me to do. Weaver's a powerful dog. It's natural for him to go after a hair. Yeah, I know, but... If I'd have warned you properly, if I'd have been more careful, I shouldn't have taken him out into the fields during harvest time. It's as simple as that. I feel sick when I think about it. I mean, I sometimes wonder what... What? what? Well, we don't know anything about Weaver's past. No, he was left here after lockdown, wasn't he? Yeah, he's tied to the railing outside. I always had a feeling, though, that he'd been used in hair coursing. Ah, oh, lamping. And the old ways just clicked back in. Possible. Oh, poor old thing. Don't worry about everything at Home Farm, by the way. They're carrying on with the harvesting. Oh, that's good. Ed and Brian swap places, though. 
Ed didn't fancy driving the tractor after... Mm. What's happening? Well, we've done what we can for now. Cleaned up the wounds. How is he, Alistair? I can't really say at the moment. Sorry. Is he going to be all right? He's had quite a knock. What actually happened? A hair came out of the barn. Weaver broke loose and darted after it, straight for the tractor and the trailer. He, he missed the tractor, but mm. hit the trailer. And the back wheel just sort of clipped him. He dashed off so fast. He's a greyhound. He has a high prey drive. Once he set off, I doubt anyone would be able to stop him. What's the diagnosis? Well, he's taken a blow to the abdomen, below the rib cage, so no protection. Which makes me worry about internal injury. Worry? Don't you know? It's hard to be sure at this stage. He's bleeding from the mouth, but that's not conclusive. Uh, can you give him anything? Not till we know more. Anaesthetic could be dangerous in his condition. So, um, so what happens now? Well, Paul's taking blood samples. That should help us determine the level of blood loss. And we'll put him on a drip of Hartman's solution. And what does that do? Well, to a certain extent, it'll counter blood loss and shock. The bag will have to be replaced at regular intervals. So throughout the night? Mm. Paul's volunteered to stay tonight and see to that. Oh, thank him for me, will you? Yeah, of course. Is there anything we can do? Uh, not at the moment. We'll have a clearer picture by the morning. Till then, go home, get some rest. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You could stay over at Brookfield, you know, if you don't want to be on your own. Uh, oh, no, no, thanks, Ruth. I'll, I'll just get back to the harvest, I think. You're sure that's best? Ed'll need relieving. Anyway, I'd rather stay busy than, um, than see what tomorrow brings. Right. You should be prepared, though. By morning, you might have a difficult decision to face. So that's it, is it? Yes. What you had to tell me? That's it. And I'm not making excuses or anything, but when I told Linda Snell all that, all that, that stuff... About me being hopeless? Yes. Uh, no. No, I never actually said hopeless. What did you say? I can't remember exactly. Um, well, it meant hopeless? Uh, more or less, yes. Uh, uh, I might have said pathetic. Oh, I see. Or, or maybe useless. Yes, um, thank you, Brad. I get the picture. Like I say, I can't remember the exact words, but... Linda Snell, she was asking about the fate, so I was mostly talking about that, saying it was sort of bound to be a washout because it was so badly organised. By me? Yes. This is why I come here this morning, to confess. For abusing my name? Not exactly that, no, for talking to Linda Snell about how bad it all was. For betraying me, in fact? Yes. I should have told you first. What? You mean tell me, and then go and tell Linda Snell? Yeah. Probably better that way round. M more honest. Or better still, maybe just keep your trap shut. You've disrespected me, Brad. I am prepared to pay for the arm I've done. If I can. Only please don't cast me out. Cast you out? Banish me from talking to anyone in the family. To be frank with you, Brad, I shall have to give that one some thought. This is a serious matter. I know. I do know that. At the very least, I shall have to consider your position as honorary treasurer of the Ambridge Fate Committee 2023. I'm sorry, Eddie. I I'm so sorry I've done this to you. Hi, Stella. Ruth, come in. Um, I just thought I'd call by to find out how things are. Oh, not good, to be honest. Oh, Stella, I'm so sorry. Weaver had a bad night. Alistair called me just a moment ago. Do they know any more about his injuries? Alistair thinks it's a ruptured spleen. In fact, it might have been damaged anyway, even before he was rescued. But they can do something about that. It's not easy, Ruth. Operate or something, can't they? No. Now, apparently he's too weak to be able to take the anaesthetic. So, you're saying... Yeah. Oh, Stella. The choice... In the end, it wasn't much of a choice at all. Prolonging a life of pain, a series of risky operations and a severely restricted quality of life, or let him go. I asked Alistair if I could go to the surgery to be with him before he... Um, can you? Yeah, yeah. I said I'd get there by 11. 
And I've squared it with Brian. He was great about it, He'll understand what Weaver means to you. I don't think he minded at all, taking over the reins. Well, look, I'll come with you. Oh, no, Ruth, you don't have to do that. I want to, but only if it's helpful. You might not want anyone with you. You might want to do this on your own. What I would like... Would just say... Would you take me there and bring me back afterwards? Would you, uh, would you do that, please? Is there anything else I can do? Like what? To, to make up for what I've done wrong. Maybe if I could do some work round here or something. No, Brad. B because, no... Like, you, like you say, it is even worse than I thought. No, before. listen. First off, I betray you, and then I insult you. I, I thought it was just a betraying, you know, telling him the snell all, all that. But now there's the insults Look, and don't all. You worry. Personal about... insults about being useless and, and dodgy. I think I might have told you you was dodgy, and that's horrible. A horrible thing to do. Brad! What? Will you give it a rest? Give what a rest? Going on about it. I'm only trying to say sorry. Yes, and you've done that now. Lots of time, so put a cork in it for half a minute, will you? Sorry. I was having you on. You were... Joking, you. Joking? <laughs> don't bother me. What you said to Linda Snell? I, I don't get it. I... I was playing along. Only you was giving yourself such a hard time. I've been trying to stop you for the last five minutes. But what about the Grundy coat? What coat? Oh, don't grass up a mate. That's everyone's coat. Th that's what I did, though. That was small time grassing. And for a good reason. Me and Linda were just now with the best of pals over the fight. We're the dream team, in fact. I should be thanking you. That's what Mia said. A bad thing for a good reason. Well, she's right. <sighs> yeah. I didn't know you'd take it so bad. It's my old-fashioned idea of a laugh. It gets me into trouble sometimes. Clary's always telling me. I was getting proper worried. Yes, well, I could see that. But there's no need. I thought you was going to tell me I couldn't see Mia no more. Why would I say that? As punishment. No. You and Mia are... I think that's lovely. Oh, well... <laughs> Sorry for taking the mic I like that. It's all right. Like I say, I, I go too far sometimes. You are forgiven. <laughs> Thank you. So the fate's going to turn out all right, is it? Mm, I'm quietly confident. And you've got this special eye light set up? I have indeed. The great rounding off of a brilliant day. I hope so. I'm just putting the finishing touches to it today as it happens. Hey, do you want to give me a hand? Could I? You certainly can, but... What? You have to promise not to tell anyone else about it. Of course. The Grundy Code, eh? Stella? Yeah? We're all ready. Would you like to come over and stand with him? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you can stand here, so he can see you. All right. Weaver? It's only me. That's right. Talk to him. Keep talking to him if you can. Alistair. Thank you, Paul. You all right, are you, Stella? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I, I can be with him if no, you'd no, rather no, not. No, no, I'll be fine. I want to do this. Hello, boy. Oh, poor old thing. It's so quiet. When I first met you, you know, you weren't quiet at all. Could hear you barking through two doors. Alistair was looking after you after you'd been tied up outside, wasn't he? Good boy. Uh, keep still for me. Keep very so still. So, in a way, I met you before I ever saw you, and I thought, well, now there's an interesting voice. There's someone with a bit of character. Distinguished voice. And then, when Alistair took me to meet you, I could see I was right. Funny old dog. Just like you were calling out to me. Stella, it's all right now. Weaver can't hear you anymore. <sighs> Doesn't get any easier, does it? No. Especially when it's an animal you know. And you sure know Weaver. Hmm. Abandoned at the surgery like a piece of rubbish. Obviously badly treated. And then what? Finds love and attention from Stella, and it all ends up like this. Well, he did at least have that much, though. She really did care for him. Actually, it um, caught me a bit off guard back there. How do you mean? Letting my emotions get the better of me. Get the better of you? Is that what you think happened? Well, couldn't you tell? What, that you were upset? Yes. 
and that would be wrong, why? You have to remain in control. Or keep it professional. I've always told you this. Mm, yes, I know. From the very start. <laughs> it was the cause of our first row. Be professional, Paul. <laughs> Don't get too emotionally involved. Well, don't hug the clients, <laughs> I seem to remember. <laughs> yes, except that maybe, just occasionally, a hug could be what's needed. Anyway, I'm not talking about you. You were perfectly professional just now. This is what I'm saying, Alistair. It's not one or the other. Of course, be professional. But Stella could see you cared about Weaver. And I know that mattered to her. Well, I'm not saying don't care. It's really simple. People would rather have a vet who shows a bit of emotion than one who just does the job and takes the money. End of lecture. Yeah, well, point taken. And thank you, Paul. All right, don't push your luck. <laughs> OK. OK, you've had a piece of my advice. Now it's my turn to ask you something. Oh, yeah? What? Well, I've had the pictures printed from the photo shoot the other day. The photos of Weaver? Exactly. So, should I give them to Stella now, or wait a while? You think she might find them upsetting? Well, she might. Although she does seem to be coping pretty well with all this. In control, you mean? Mm. Maybe hit her later. Well, as for the photos, if I were you, I'd give her the option. Put them in an envelope, and she can choose when or even whether to look at them. It's horny a lasagna, nothing special. Oh, no, it's lovely. And don't feel obliged to eat it. That's so kind. You might not feel like eating much just yet. Oh, I, I probably will, though. I've just come in from driving the combine. Oh, don't look like that. I had to be done and I want to be busy. You don't have to put yourself through it, you know. You might even benefit from a day or two off. No, thank you, but I'm fine. If you need numbers, we could probably lend you Ben for a while. Or Josh. They'd be happy to help out. I know they would. That's good to know. It really is. And I'll call you if I need them. I promise mm. that as things are, I You just... want to cope? Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. You know where we are? Of course. And thank you. Meanwhile, what do you make of this? What is it? The photographs from the photo shoot I told you about. Paul brought those round? Yeah. It was on the doormat when I got back just now. It's still sealed. Uh, I wasn't going to open it. I'm not sure I can face them today. How oh, sweet of him to bring them, though. What would you do? Would you look at them? It doesn't matter what I do. Would you, though? No. Oh, it's funny. I came back from the field and the house looked empty. Felt empty. I, I was on my own. I never been aware of that before, not here anyway. And then I saw the envelope on the mat and I, I knew what it was. You still didn't feel like looking though? Not the same, is it? And anyway, the photo shoot was a bit of a disaster. How? I told you. Paul was leaping about trying to get all arty, but Weaver wasn't having anything to do with it. It was really uncooperative. <laughs> I think you should look. What? At the photos. Why? I don't know what. I've just changed my mind, and maybe it's better if you see them while there's someone here with you. Or if I don't see them at all. Ever? Oh, here, let me have it. There you are. See? Look at this. Weaver, dashing out of shot. You can't see his head at all. He looks very sprightly, though. <laughs> sprightly. Ungainly, more like. And clumsy. He was always bumping into things. And, and look, this one, look. On his back, waggling his legs in the air. <laughs> He's doing it on purpose. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Park greyhound, <laughs> but pantomime horse. Oh, poor Paul was getting so frustrated. And he wanted to use these on the website. Okay. <laughs> oh, be honest, Ruth. He's not very photogenic, is he? <sighs> And what about this one? Oh, uh, you're an ugly old thing, really. <laughs> Head and shoulders straight <laughs> at the camera. They're <laughs> grinning. He's grinning. He's actually <laughs> grinning at us. My poor ugly old friend. <laughs> here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> 